uh, what's the, the one of the biggest differences uh, with the past? Welcome back on the Space Info Podcast. Here we talk about space and everything related to it. If you are passionate about space, astronomy, technology and everything about it, you can join all our social platforms at the Space Info Club or our website at www.spaceinfo.club where tons of content and a community of experts are there waiting for you. This is the Space Info Club. Welcome everyone, today again to the Space Info Club YouTube channel if you are watching us on uh, YouTube welcome on the Spotify podcast episode of uh, the Space Info Club or also all the other uh, audio streaming platforms today um, it's quite of I would say special episode because I strongly invite you to uh, watch the episode also on YouTube because you can see the screen and you can see what I'm uh, looking now uh, at the time of the recording I'd say uh, I look at it live on um, NASA um, YouTube channel and I'm seeing the relocation of the SpaceX Q8 Dragon spacecraft uh, on board the International Space Station so I'd like to uh, use this topic to talk about a little uh, of, the spa- uh, um, of the International Space Station talk about the operation over there and also maybe uh, some mentioning uh, the privatization topic that uh, I'd like to go deep uh, um, into it in a, in a further episode of the podcast and also here on the YouTube channel so let me know if you're interested uh, write a, a comment down below or just get in contact on our Instagram page or uh, website uh, I really appreciate your comments and also your interaction particularly on the website I received a lot of them so thank you so much and uh, so today uh, we talk about uh, operation on the International Space Station so for sure uh, for all the people out there that are quite experts uh, I, I would say just from the beginning that uh, we'd like to I, I'd like to uh, simplify a lot of things to make this content uh, um, uh, listenable and also comprehensive for all the people that are following uh, the Space Info Club I'd like to make some simplification so uh, please forgive me if I um, I neglect some some topics some some things that are quite technical and uh, just tell me if I, I say something wrong or there is something that you'd like to uh, to know more in uh, into depth so we try to give give you some uh, more technical content next time so uh, what you can see on the right part of the of the screen is uh, the live stream from the NASA YouTube channel there uh, there is going uh, what's going on is a relocation of the uh, the SpaceX spacecraft particularly the Crew 8 Dragon so it's a manned spacecraft as you know for sure is a completely autonomous uh, vehicle uh, where four astronauts can be, can be uh, transported on board so what happened here is that the uh, the vehicle was already docked to the International Space Station and uh, uh, but wh- so why did they undock it uh, so there is no uh, no uh, plan a landing today they are just undocking the spacecraft from the the station and then they are going to dock it uh, to a different part of the station because uh, in may so uh, in the next few weeks a couple of weeks maybe uh, if everything goes uh, goes was okay um, a Boeing Starliner is going to be launched and it's going to um, to dock to the International Space Station so uh, due to the uh, internal procedure over there uh, you need to relocate the spacecraft which is uh, uh, already there and to dock it to a different port to uh, to leave the, the, the selected port for the Boeing Starliner free and to let that spacecraft dock uh, uh, I would say uh, smoothly to the International Space Station so What's happening right now? The undocking phase uh, has already uh, went, uh, went successful. You're already seeing from this, the live stream that the spacecraft is uh, soaring, uh, I would say, freely. Uh, our planet. They are going. Uh, they are moving almost, very almost, uh, to the uh, same speed. Actually, uh, now the, the the Crew Dragon spacecraft is approaching again the International Space Station. So, for the people who uh, didn't see the live stream from the beginning, what happened before? Well, uh, the spacecraft was docked to the International Space Station. Then uh, the hatches were uh, have been closed, and the release phase, uh, which is a few just a few minutes, occurred successfully clearly and the spacecraft just went a little away from the station 
you have to, to know that uh, the International Space Station uh, and particularly, uh, more generally speaking, all the docking and rendezvous procedure um, are operated in, a, I would say, a military fashion. So uh, you have the attacking spacecraft, in this case, attacking is clearly um, uh, a military uh, language, but uh, uh, no harm is forecasted for sure for the operation. And then you, had, you have the target spacecraft, which is clearly the station. Uh, in this case, when these two spacecraft are planning to dock, the attacking one uh, is approaching to the International Space Station clearly from kilometers below or above. Usually, uh, in 99% of the cases, uh, this happen uh, the attack happens from below. And uh, the attacking spacecraft uh, already from a lot, a lot of meters, and in the order of hundreds of meters away, uh, starts the approach. The relative speed are very very small. Absolute speed of the International Space Station is something like 28,000 km per, per, uh, per hour. Uh, so it's a, a standard LEO orbital, or orbital velocity. For people who don't know, uh, the International Space Station is flying something like 400 kilometers uh, from the surface of our planet. So the attacking spacecraft starts, starts the approach uh, quite far as you can as you maybe have imagined from the from the station and in the order of a few centimeters per second of uh, uh, relative velocity the approach occurs you have to know that the international space station in this case but uh, usually in all the um, docking operations also uh, as, as I've said, uh, uh, coming from the uh, military operation, also this is the same thing that happened when the, uh, two aircraft perform aerial refueling. Uh, it's the same, uh, I would say, uh, way of thinking. You have a protection zone, in this case, around uh, the International Space Station. So you have something like the uh, safe sphere or protection sphere, which is an ideal clear sphere of uh, protection. Uh, where the, the spacecraft, the attacking spacecraft, uh, has to qualify to enter into that sphere. So, if you are coming too fast, uh, if your parameters, uh, clearly uh, orbital parameters, so if your relative speed is too high, your orbit is not perfectly aligned with the target, uh, for example, all these parameters are computed uh, automatically from uh, controllers, but also from observers on the International Space Station, even though the procedures uh, can be and usually is completely automatic. Uh, these parameters are monitored and if, only if, these parameters are all uh, okay into nominal, uh, I would say, ranges, as you can see maybe from the live stream now, those are only uh, a few of the, of the old monitor parameters. Uh, if if are those okay, you can you just uh, are granted the access into that ideal uh, safe sphere around the International Space Station. While you are approaching and you are entering the sphere, you always have to have an escape maneuver ready. Uh, if something gets wrong, if you are in the, in the remote uh, probability that the attacking spacecraft is hit by, for example, a space debris and then its trajectory is perturbed and uh, the risk is of an impact into the International Space Station, uh, you have to, uh, to be able to perform an escape maneuver at any time. So uh, the safety and the life, I would say, of the people on board uh, the International Space Station and of the station itself has to be preserved at any cost. So that's the main goal of any uh, operation around, around it. What we are seeing now uh, from the stream is again a very, very, um, I would say, slow uh, approaching of the spacecraft of the Crew Dragon uh, towards the station. And you can see that uh, the target is adjusting uh, its trajectory in order to uh, center that, uh, I would say, target in, uh, towards the station. So uh, while we are talking, I would like to mention a little uh, the deprivatization topic of the of the current space economy. If you want to, to know more about this, just let me know in the comment or write to the Space Info Club on our social or on our website. And uh, what we are seeing nowadays is uh, uh, the, the flourish of a completely new space economy. But uh, uh, what's the, the one of the biggest differences uh, with the past? So uh, the, the point is that uh, a completely different 
different approach of NASA itself occurred in the last years. And with last years, I'm thinking about something like uh, the last two decades. So what happened is a, a completely different approach also under the economical, program, programmatic and also managerial um, uh, point of view. Because at the beginning, if you are thinking about the Apollo era or uh, the, the 70s, the 80s uh, and also the 90s, all the programs uh, were granted by uh, public agencies. I'm thinking about NASA, I'm thinking about the European Space Agency and Japanese Space Agency, so the YAXA and also the Canadian Space Agency, so the four major agencies, at least at that time, which granted a contract to contractors, but uh, the, the main focus of this contract is that uh, uh, there were one or more objective, they usually were scientific and research objective. However, if uh, any contract has always happened and it's happening also nowadays with the space launch system uh, was delayed by any cause, um, actually it was not re a real problem in terms of uh, getting that target accomplished, that goals accomplished. Uh, so you didn't have a fixed and a limited budget, so any delay, any problem was basically coverage, covered by, by, the, by the budget, so uh, actually the costs of any uh, deed in space were uh, uh, basically skyrocketing and uh, the, the main goal was the, the goal of the mission. So the budget, even though was very important, was not the, um, the constraint of the program. Nowadays, the thing have changed uh, drastically because you have a fixed bo uh, budget. For example, I'm thinking about the commercial lunar payload uh, uh, CLPS by NASA, where private companies uh, uh, have to qualify and uh, have to propose their programs in order to get to the moon and to use their uh, the resources out there uh, in order to accomplish some targets and uh, they are given uh, uh, selected a very limited budget uh, with very limited I'm not saying that uh, the, the money is uh, is scarce uh, it, it isn't even though it is not enough for sure for the space deals of the future but that's not the topic of today However, the, the budget is limited, so they are granted uh, some amount of money and that's it. You cannot uh, just get more money because uh, you, are, uh, you have some delays, you have some problems. This, this part of the thing is up to the private companies. So uh, if a company has to, uh, to reach one goal, uh, it has to qualify it for the uh, budget assig uh, assignation, I would say. And uh, the, the point now is, uh, that the approach differently from the past is that now companies have a limited amount of money to use. Uh, so the, the target of this new uh, management, uh, I would say, approach is that uh, you have to reach a fixed goal with a fixed amount of, uh, of money. So this is the, the main change of uh, of the thing with the past. So uh, we've talked uh, a little in our, on our website. This is just, uh, I would say, a mention of uh, some articles we have written. So if you're interested uh, to read more, just visit www.spaceinfo.club. And if you like to, if you like us to, to release some content about this, just let us know in the comments or reach out on our social channels. Now we just came, come back to the live event now. Uh, I, I, for the people that are, uh, are just started uh, looking at the, the video right now, we are looking at the SpaceX Q8 uh, Dragon spacecraft uh, relocation on the International Space Station. So, uh, in addition to what we have said before, this kind of relocation is, uh, I would say, uh, completely automatic, uh, and the, spa the attacking spacecraft uh, is performing the maneuver completely autonomously without uh, the aid, for example, of uh, um, Canadarm. For, for people who don't know what Canadarm is, is a robotic uh, arm attached to the International Space Station, and uh, it, it's it has been built by the Canadian space agencies and all the uh, companies uh, be below that uh, consortium, that that agency actually, and. Uh, the capability of this arm is uh, uh, that of uh, moving uh, objects that are docked or astronauts also uh, around the International Space Station. Maybe you've seen some spacewalk and uh, astronauts being relocated from one point to another uh, thanks to the uh, Canadarm. 
In this case, uh, the Crew-8 Dragon spacecraft uh, is moving by itself, so the, 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 de -dock, the undocking and redocking operation is completely performed by uh, the, the SpaceX spacecraft. We have seen now that the relative, the relative velocity is very small as usual. Uh, what, what happens when, uh, uh, for example, astronauts have to dock to the uh, space station usually? Uh, well, uh, the, the relative velocity is usually in the order of 7-10 centimeters per second, so it's very, very slow, but the procedure is completely autonomous. And what's happening here is that uh, um, the, the operation are going good, and actually uh, things seem to be happening nominally, everything is in control, and uh, we are now back to the final phases of the uh, dock, the yeah port relocation of the SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft, and uh, the operation seemed to be successful. Actually, we are waiting for the spacecraft to to dock, and uh, well, the confirmation of the of the docking of the spacecraft. So while we're waiting, uh, uh, some words about uh, what's going to happen here. Okay, so here we can see that uh, uh, the operation has been completed. Uh, actually, the attacking spacecraft, so SpaceX Crew Dragon 8 uh, um, spacecraft uh, is docked. So the hatch, the two hatches are still closed. But uh, yeah, uh, we have the confirmation of the, of the docking of uh, SpaceX Crew Dragon uh, to the International Space Station. So relocation occurred successfully. And uh, yeah, uh, things are okay. We have a successful relocation now. Uh, the, the, this kind of uh, operation is uh, can be considered terminated successfully, and we are now waiting for the launch of Boeing Starliner. Uh, basically, next week, uh, the the launch of the capsule is uh, forecasted and set for uh, May the sixth and with on board to NASA astronauts Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore who will be flying the spacecraft and will, will stay in orbit for about one week uh, executing experiments on the International Space Station and then coming back to our planet with the same capsule so again a Boeing Starliner capsule and uh, this flight uh, will be a very important milestone for the certification of the capsule itself. Indeed, uh, nowadays in the Western world, I would say uh, SpaceX uh, is the only company who, which has a certi fully certified uh, manned spacecraft uh, in order to, to bring astronauts uh, to the International Space Station. So if you are from the aviation world, uh, the, the, the launch occurring on next Monday for Boeing will be a sort of experimental launch if you can if you you would like to to see this uh, so if everything goes okay uh, this will be a, a paramount uh, milestone for Boeing in order to fully certify for human flight their Starliner capsule so uh, now we have just reached the, the end of this uh, this stream and also I, I will close I will close the the video in a few seconds before uh, uh, say goodbye I'd like to re to recall that uh, the, the launch of Monday will occur uh, from uh, from Florida and also after a week uh, the capsule will uh, land back still on earth so it will be a parachute and airbag assisted landing so touching down on uh, on earth uh, clearly again in the United States uh, I think it will be very interesting to, to look live to this event maybe we'll, we'll make a live coverage just let us know uh, in the comment or contact us what you'd like to see so again thank you for listening thank you for watching and please share and support our videos and our content and help us grow that's free for you but uh, that's a big difference for us thank you and see you next time